I bought a new bike, but it's not exactly what you might think. It's not as high end as you think, um, but it's not an entry level bike. I got, I got the Merlin 6. So I bought the Merlin 6 so you don't have to. This is my 30 day review of the Trek Merlin 6. So this here is pretty much stock. I haven't changed many things about it. I just haven't really changed anything. The point of this bike is to really see what it's capable of. And I needed something a little faster rolling for faster rides like commuting and overall shortcutting, campgrounding, all the times where maybe a full suspension overkill bike isn't necessary. I bought the most overkill underkill bike you can. So let's review what the Trek Merlin 6 is and what's different about it compared to the 5 and 7 and why I chose it. First off, the Trek Merlin 6 is Trek's kind of mid to high range hardtail commuter slash trail bike. It's a, it's a whole lot of bike all packed into one. Reasons I chose this one, big draw to me was the 1x10 drivetrain. So I've had 1x12 and 1x10 and 1x for a very long time. That gives me one gear on the front and then a wide range of gears on the back. Upsides to it. So one by it just works great. It's very clean on the handlebars. You just have the one shifting. It shifts really fast and nice. This is the Shimano Dior. Even on a $5,000 Fuel EX8, you're getting Shimano Dior XT slightly higher, but it's still that same family of shifting. It still gets this really high performance out of it. And I really like it. It's snappy and functional. It's simple in all its shifting. The low ranges I have no issue with. The downside is the top end. If I'm really high speed commuting, I can max this bike out. If I'm just cruising along at a good pace without getting too worked up, I mean, it's still working out, but not too worked out, this is excellent. It's really just those high speed sprints you may miss the two by that the Merlin 5 would offer. Downgrades from the Merlin 7, which I chose over this, is because I have an already specific trail bike. I didn't need the higher end suspension, the tubeless ready wheels, or any of that kind of fancier stuff, better brakes. I don't need any of that. This already has a really nice Tektro hydraulic disc brake. There are mixed reviews on Tektro. Some people don't like them. I feel like they remind me of a SRAM brake where they have a soft feel to them, but they work. They're not soft and unfunctional, they're soft and functional. It's just the way they feel. It's just how every brand's kind of pistons and internal designs make them feel a little different. And Shimano definitely feels a little more snappy on power. These work great for me. You have the lockout from Fork, which I will never touch because it's handy, but it's not that big of a deal. The XR2s are rolling fantastically, so that's the tire choice for this. I've got lots of traction off-road, and most importantly, I have very low tire resistance on-road. Yeah, there could be a faster tire out there, but this thing cruises. This thing rolls so nicely on the road, especially, again, compared to a few the X level bike where we're getting these big, heavy tires on there. Great for traction. But when you're just going down paved or gravel, it is so unnecessary to push that much power through it. But you still have traction when you hit the off-road trails, which I will be doing with this. A few minor tweaks I upgraded on this before we go for a test ride is the seat. I switched this out for a bunch of a commuter saddle, the 185, slightly wider. I think it's great. It's a reasonable price seat. It is big and cushy, but it's not a big and cushy seat, you know? It's really comfy to sit on. It's really easy on the body. It's definitely comfier than the stock one, which I actually run just the stock on the Fuel EX, but I may potentially switch to the 165 version of this because it is just that comfortable and low profile still. I'd recommend the Bontrager commuter saddle to pretty much anyone. Like, I don't find them uncomfortable at all. I think it is a great upgrade. And in my water bottle cage, again, Bontrager. They all do pretty much the same job, but I've never seen one of these plastic ones break. They are really top-notch quality. And just for styling, I added a front fender. This just stops a little bit of the spray and dust, which will come up on the wet days. Don't have too many of them, but we've got a bit of rain coming in right now. And I do like it a lot. I think it works well, and I think it adds a cool little style to it. Otherwise, we're pretty much 100% stock otherwise. I don't think I'll change or do anything else. Stock pedals. 
working for the most part really good pedal for commuting definitely on the trail you can tell your feet aren't locked on there like you would with a nice metal spike one so I'm undecided if I'm going to upgrade those along the way for the purpose I'm getting this bike for I think it's a really well put together bike ride quality just great just works great geometry I'm very comfortable I do feel like I'm used to those shorter stems where I'm upright a little bit more so it would be interesting to maybe switch out this them to a short little 35 but I don't know if it's really necessary on longer rides if I'm too relaxed position and I'm kind of upright but putting my weight out I can get a little numbness on the hands there is obviously no ergonomic grips so it'll be something maybe the ergo grips or a shorter stem to just bring it a little more upright it's just a style of riding I'm doing otherwise I have no complaints with it it's a fantastic bike it works well it rides well and let's go and give it a bit of a test ride on some paved some trail and some gravel just to show you what this can really do and how capable of a bike it is so hopping over here to the gopro we are just going to go for a bit of a rip through town and then to some small trails and jumps to really show you what this is made of on the paved stuff it rolls superbly nice i have no issues with it gravel a lot of control you can really throw that tire around and you have a lot of control on it and it's just really smooth again that upgraded seat really makes a huge difference for these harsh little drops i really recommend upgrading it here we are at the bike park these guys have a mixture of jumps from about you know eight nine feet maybe and um, some good huckers which i won't be hitting on the marlin 5 and then some more gentle ones, which is totally doable on this. Traction you can see is a little slippy on the softer corners, but it's not really critical. It's not super difficult. Ride quality is super nice. Obviously it's a bit dark out, so the GoPro doesn't keep that stabilization as nice, but there's lots of control doing the jumps. Again, these aren't the hugest jumps. This is still a Marlin 6, but I feel confident, I feel controlled. The pedals are definitely the big letdown on the trail side of things. If I was going to be jumping a lot with this bike, I'd definitely upgrade to something with a bit of a spike to it. Ooh. Yeah, so whoever rebuilt these jumps, excellent job. If it's a guy I've seen in the grocery store, good, good, good job. I can't believe you've done this all by shovel. Haven't hit the big ones on the Marlin 6 yet. Still got to work up to it. Still weird not having to drop a post compared to what I got but I think for anyone looking it's a great option for reference to everyone that big jump is just a bit longer the biggest one I did is just a bit longer than the length of the bike not a huge air time but pretty impressive for an entry-level trail bike that boom is extremely fun. And then the bigger ones are these guys here, which kind of have an offshoot and then land. And then you've got options to hit big. This side, I think I could hit. The other one should give you a bit more huck. And I'm not sure if the Marlin 6 is, is built for that kind of kick. You know what I mean? Overall, I'm really liking this bike. It works well. Fork's a little noisy on the jumps, but otherwise, no complaints. See you guys in the next video.